Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you too to the patrons who help support the creation and production of this podcast every day with their support at patreon.com slash SW7x7. Thank you so much. All right, we're talking about The Phantom Menace today. This is the fourth in our monthly series of looks at the background of the movie, considering that it is turning 25 this year. And in previous episodes, we've talked about this uh, CD-ROM, about an episode one insider's guide, and there's information on it on a website called The Secret History of Star Wars. Somebody took information from that CD-ROM and you know documented it, and then this other person took it and put it on their website. <laughs> so there's a lot of secondhand stuff about this. So I've been picking pieces of stuff here and there to share with you out of this. And what I have for you today is some stuff about how the Gungans and Naboo <laughs> don't get along with each other. And we have little elements about this in the movie. We have Boss Nass saying, yeah, we used to know like in the Naboo and they think their brain's so big, right? So yeah, he definitely gives you an idea that you know the Gungans don't like the Naboo because the Naboo don't seem to like them. And it's his impression that the Naboo just looked down on them. And then later on in the movie, Jar Jar says to Padme, this is in the finished part of the movie as well, that that the Gungans have a grand army. And he says that he thinks this is why the Naboo don't like them, don't like the Gungans. But Padme doesn't react to this at all. And later, when they all go back to Naboo and they meet up with Boss Nass, Padme gets to talk to him and says that although their two people don't always agree with each other, their societies have lived in peace with each other until the Trade Federation business happened. And she begs the Gungans to help them fight the Trade Federation. And Boss Nass's reaction is, oh, so you don't think you're greater than us. All right, we can be friends. Now, this is where it gets wild. In earlier drafts of The Phantom Menace, this was not at all the case. For example, when they are escaping from Naboo in the beginning, Amidala tries to prevent Jar Jar from getting on her ship. And after Obi-Wan argues with her about it, she agrees but says that he has to be kept in the droid hold. And later on, Captain Panaka makes a reference to Jar Jar smelling up the ship. But over the course of the movie in the earlier draft, Amidala and Jar Jar actually get to talking and realize that neither of them really know why it is that the Naboo think badly of the Gungans or vice versa. And Jar Jar says that he thinks the reason why the Gungans have an army is because they're afraid of the Naboo and they're maintaining the army for self-defense. And it gets to the point where eventually when the heroes go back to Naboo to fight the Trade Federation once and for all, when they go to visit Governor <laughs> Nass to ask for the Gungan army's help, Amidala and Jar Jar come off of Amidala's starship arm in arm, and that actually kind of makes everybody a little bit surprised and then opens the door for further dialogue. And this draft seems to actually give the speech that Amidala gives to Boss Nass to Jar Jar instead. And Jar Jar has a different take on things. According to what's transcribed from that website, he says something to the effect of, I've spent some time with the Naboo, with Amidala's people. They're like us in some ways. I've traveled far. I've seen many wonders. We must become a part of the universe. In isolation, we will die. And he's referring to the fact that the Gungan have no connections with the outer world while the Naboo, of course, are connected with the greater galaxy as a whole. And that's the speech that convinces Governor Nass to throw in with Amidala and the Naboo to fight the Trade Federation. So that's pretty wild, right? And as far as a reason why Lucas was heading down that path and then eventually kind of dialed things back a bit, well, there's a suggestion that it has to do with, for all intents and purposes, the Empire's sort of rampant xenophobia, which would also be Palpatine's xenophobia, basically, right? Like the fact that he saw human races as being above all other species in the galaxy. And so the theory goes, the 
Phantom Menace would show the seeds of that you know, fracture and that division developing in society by showing this prejudice, except of course, you know, we couldn't have that happening with Amidala and the Naboo because they were going to be our heroes. And so, yeah, it makes perfect sense why they would ultimately change that. So that's what I've got for you on our fourth look at the Phantom Menace considering it's its 25th anniversary this year, our look behind the scenes and at what an earlier version of the story actually looked like. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. If you enjoy the show, please leave a rating or review if you haven't done it already. Please hit a like or a follow or a subscribe or a join button, whatever the app offers you. Please consider telling your friends and your connections on social media that this show exists for them. Sharing links are with all your favorite apps. And if you want to help me as a creator who you know I've done this by myself for nearly 10 years you can do that patreon.com slash sw7x7 and it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be by seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items, are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders, may the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.